Hello mathematicians. So this is how to find the slope if you're given two points or two ordered pairs. And we know that ordered pairs are always x, y. That's what the order is. So how do we figure out the slope if we're given these two points? Well, the slope as we know is always rise over run, so we need to figure out how high we're going and divide that by how long it takes. So how do we measure the height of something when we're on an x-y plane? Well, the up and down axis is the y-axis. So that's how we measure how far up and down things go. So the y values here are going to help us. We take 1, 4, and 4, 3, and we look at how much it changes in the y values to figure out how high we're going. So how much does it change from 4 to 3? It actually goes down 1. So that's negative 1. We're going down 1 from 4 to 3. How far across does it go? Well, on our x, y axes over here, y goes up and down, and x goes left to right. So if we look at the x values, we can figure out how far across it went. Well, if I'm going from 1 up to 4, I'm going across 3. So, again, we got to figure out how much it goes up and divide that by how much it goes over. Well, it went down 1, so I had negative 1, and it went over 3, so I had a slope of negative 1 third. If you don't like seeing them side by side like that, we can also rewrite them as a table. Some people like seeing it like this a little bit more because it's right in front of you one spot. And then again, to figure out how high you're going divided by how far you're going, you just take the y value, we're going down one, and divide it by the x value, going over three. Once again, we get negative one third. Another way to look at it is to use the formula. Some people really like to be able to plug in values into a formula. If you're one of those people, in order to get the rise over the run, what we have to do is take the difference in the y values so we're going to subtract y2 minus y1. Then we're going to divide that by the difference in the x values. And we're going to take x2 minus x1. So if we plug in those numbers, The second y value, that's y2 right there, is going to be 3. The first y value, y1, is 4. We divide that by the second x value, that's 4, minus the first x value, that's 1. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Once again, we get our slope, negative one-third. Finally, the last way to do it is by graphing. If you really like to see it instead of just write down numbers, you can always graph it. So let's figure this out. One comma four. I'm going to go over one, and then I'm going to go up. So there's my first point right there. 
My second point is at 4, 3. So I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1, 2, 3. So here is my second point. I can draw a line between them if I want to, but really what I need to do now is count the steps. So to get from the first point to the second point, I have to go down 1, so that's down 1, and I divide that by how many steps across? 1, 2, 3. And once again, I have my slope of negative 1 third. All of these used how much do I go up divided by how much do I go over. All of these went down 1 and over 3. So that is my slope. That is how steep it is, and it's going downhill, so it's negative.